let's talk about the risks associated with buying mineral rights. I'm going to assume that you already know what mineral rights are and the various types and I'll link to those below, but if you don't already know that information, you probably shouldn't be looking into buying mineral rights. It's really risky. There are all kinds of things that can go wrong and ways that you can lose your money. So this list is not complete. We're just going to talk about six of the most obvious risks associated with buying mineral rights. One of the things I see all the time in the auctions is new properties for sale. So maybe it's a royalty interest or a mineral royalty interest or even a well bore interest. And it's during the first few months of the well's life. So the revenue looks like it's really high, but it's deceptive because, especially horizontal wells, but all wells have a very steep decline curve. They're gonna lose probably half or more of their value within the first year. So if you look at the first three or six months of production, and you're seeing $3,000 a month in revenue, you can bet that that's gonna drop dramatically. You might be only seeing you know, $1,000 in revenue by the end of the first year, and maybe it'll settle out to being closer to five or $600 a month. So you have to not value the well that's a brand new well based on the initial production. Another risk in buying mineral rights is to buy an old well. It's sort of the opposite problem. Um, you're, you're not going to have the problem of a new well where the revenue is going to decline sharply. In an old well, you have fairly stable revenue. It's still declining, but the issue you run into there is that you might be buying into the very last years of a well's life. So if you paid, um, say, three years revenue for a well, and it's a horizontal well and it's already been producing for seven years, it may not have three years of life left. So you may never get your money back from that. So you have to be really careful and look at the offset wells, look at how long things are producing, and just know whether you're buying a horizontal or a vertical well, whether that's, um, you know, how long it's gonna be producing. There are some wells that are vertical that produce for decades, really, really small amounts, but um, they just keep going until the well is no longer economically viable. But the horizontal wells, um, they just don't produce as long. They produce a lot more minerals and their lifespan is a lot shorter. So you need to keep that in mind when you're looking at um, minerals at auction or anything that you're looking to purchase. A third risk to buying mineral rights is to buy non-producing minerals. Non-producing minerals mean there is no active oil well. There's no revenue checks. There may or may not be a lease. And um, the risk is that you pay all this money for this and maybe nobody will come by and drill a well. Maybe they will. Maybe it'll take decades. Maybe it'll get passed down from generation to generation waiting for someone to drill a well. And even if they do drill a well, they might drill a dry hole, it might be marginally successful, and that will sort of scare away other operators from exploring the area. Um, the other thing is when you're buying non-producing minerals and somebody does come and drill a well, um, you have the opportunity to negotiate a lease. And if you're not hiring an oil and a gas attorney to help you, you probably are not getting a good deal, and that's, that's a risk as well. The fourth risk associated with buying mineral rights is not doing enough due diligence. It's really on the buyer to examine everything properly and make sure that everything is correct. Um, anybody can go and say, hey, I own mineral rights in this area and trade you a deed or a conveyance for some money, and it doesn't mean that they actually own the rights. So you need to do a lot of research and a full title search and really confirm that they own what they think they own. A lot of times mineral owners um, own far less than they think they do. They think they own all of the interest in a section where really they may only own a very small part. The fifth risk in buying minerals is that you buy something with poor lease terms. And you're sort of leaving money at the table um, by having a lease that benefits the operator and not the mineral owner. So you have to make that decision whether the property you're looking at 
is beneficial and worth it, even if the lease terms are bad. By bad lease terms, um, I mean things like, sometimes, very often actually, the lease will allow the operator free use of the gas in order to run the equipment and to operate the well. While that sounds reasonable, some operators are using that gas to run their frack fleets, and you're not getting paid as a mineral owner for any of that. Um, there's also some mineral owners who will include all of their tracts of land in the lease, and if the operator drills one well, and that well produces for 10 years or 20 years or however long, it may be producing $25 a year, and yet it's held by production. And so all of the rest of that land cannot be leased by another operator because that one well is holding it. So there's all kinds of things that could be bad in a lease and you need to look over the lease terms before you buy the mineral rights. The last risk that we're gonna talk about is the risk of buying minerals that are operated by um, a bad operator. So most operators are trying to do the right thing but there are a few with well-earned bad reputations and it just often isn't worth the headache and the extra finances involved in owning minerals that are operated by one of these really bad operators. You may um, end up doing more royalty audits, you may have an attorney, you may be involved in a lawsuit, you may never be paid correctly, um, there are a lot of problems with certain operators, but thankfully those problem operators are actually very few. I just wanna mention one additional risk, which is the risk of buying working interest or even non-operated working interest. Working interest obligates you to operate the well and pay all of the expenses associated with operating the well, including paying the mineral owners. So be really, really careful with working interest. So this is just a starting place. There are obviously more risks. In fact, when you have bought minerals, you now become a mineral owner and there's a whole other set of risks associated with owning minerals. I will link to um, a webpage about, I think it's 24 or 26 different risks associated with buying, owning, and selling minerals. And 15 of those are just risks associated with owning minerals, and it's not even a complete list. So I'll link that below, and you guys can check that out also. Also, um, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos.